Welcome to Tasty Tuesday with Family and Community Health Sciences of Somerset County. I'm Daryl Mish, SCHS educator in Somerset County, and we're happy to have you here today. Today we're making a German apple kuchen. Kuchen is the German word for cake, and it's part of a multi-century old tradition where families and friends gather on a Sunday afternoon for cafe and kuchen. That's coffee and cake. It's kind of like the British high tea. Kuchen is a great dessert because it's very versatile and it uses whatever fresh fruit is available. We're going to use apples today because apples are abundant both here in the United States and in Germany. Um, and also because um, I just love the fall flavor of apples. But you can also make kuchen with pears, plums, peaches, whatever seasonal fruit you have. Uh, the ingredients are very simple. There are a million recipes for kuchen. I chose this one because it has a cake-like bottom. Most kuchens either have a cake or a pastry-like um, bottom, and then they're just topped with fruit. They're very simple, uh, not a lot of ingredients, um, and really nice flavorful. It's a very moist, dense cake, and it'll add a nice uh, base for your fruit. We're gonna use apples. Apples, as I said, are very common throughout Germany. Um, they have hundreds of varieties, just like we have in the United States. And you want to use a baking apple, one that's going to hold up during the baking process and not turn to mush. So I'm, I'm using John Gold. Um, it's a really pretty apple, as you can see. It's got a nice blush of red and um, some yellow. It's really pretty. Holds up really nicely in baking. You could also use Braeburn, wine sap, mushu, um, honey crisp. If you like a tart apple, a Granny Smith would be great. So choose an apple you like, just make sure it's gonna hold up in the baking process. You're gonna wash your fruit really well, um, then you're gonna peel it, and that I've done ahead of time. We'll set this aside. And I've peeled my apples, and I like to do this first so that you'll be ready to put the um, cake in the oven. The cake, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You could cut this apart. I like to use an apple core where it's really fast and simple. I'm do the other one. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut my apple slices a little thinner. So I'm cutting each of these in half. That way they're not quite so fat. You don't need to worry about treating the apples because you're going to do it right before you're ready to um, put it in the cake and really not going to turn any brown color. Apples are good source of fiber, great for snacks. They pair well in salads. Uh, you can even use them in cook dishes. They would work nicely with chicken. Lots of good recipes. Don't worry if your apples break into pieces. You can use the little pieces. Dish comes together really quickly, so it's great, spur of the moment. Kind of dessert. All right, so my apples are ready. I'm gonna set these aside. And we're gonna get ready to get our pan ready. So I'm using a um, eight inch pan. That's what it calls for in the recipe. I've also used a nine inch, because that's what I have, nine inch spring form pan, but it'll come out really well in this. I like to use a piece of parchment in the bottom. It makes um, getting the cake out of the pan really easy. So cut your parchment, put a little um, butter or grease in the bottom to help the parchment stay. And then we're gonna spray this really quickly with some oil spray. Um, you could also use oil and brush it on or wipe it on um, right before I'm gonna put the batter in. So the pan is ready to go. Um, the recipe will be posted at the end. It comes from a uh, website that has a whole lot of good recipes on it. So we're using one stick of butter. Um, you want it softened at room temperature so it'll um, be easy to mix. And we're using three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. I'm using a mixer and we're gonna start off slow so it doesn't spin all over. You want this to be nice and creamy. I want to keep 
Well, the powder, baking powder is mixed in well with the flour. I'm going to add that to the batter. So we just want to get this nice and incorporated, but we don't want to overmix the batter. Scrape off the beaters. Now I know in um, for some of us we have fond memories of licking the beaters. That is not recommended anymore. Uh, raw eggs, raw flour are you know natural products, and it's possible for them to have some bacteria on them. And if that bacteria wasn't good, and you lick the raw batter, you could get sick. So you want to. Avoid licking the raw batter. If you have children in the kitchen, you want to teach them to keep their fingers out of the batter and wait till the product is fully cooked. Right, so I just want to make sure everything is well mixed. And you have a nice thick batter. It's um, not really runny, but it's nice and uh, liquid. So we're going to take our baking pan, and I'm using a spray that has some flour in it. It's not required. It's just what I happen to have. I'm going to coat that pan really nice, and now I'm going to scrape in my batter. Make sure I get all of it in here. It's a nice, moist, dense cake. It has a buttery flavor. And just spread that around so it's even. to take our apples now and we're going to put them in concentric circles. Um, I'm going to start on the outside. I'm laying them down so that they point towards the middle. Um, you'll have to angle them a little bit, angle them a little bit as you go, but I'm just making a nice right next to each other touching. You could let them overlap a little if you want and you want to press them down into the batter because they, you don't want them to fall out as they're baking. So press them down. You do it again once you're um, finished putting all the apples in makes a really pretty pattern. Again, great to do with peaches, 
four pears. I've had plum kuchen, delicious. Take advantage, and it comes together so quickly that you can have this ready for coffee <laughs> or a meal, um, or a special breakfast treat once in a while. It's a nice coffee cake, if you will. So once you get to the edges are done, you're gonna do the middles. It'll overlap a little bit with the outside ring. You may not need all of the apple, it depends on the size of the apple. Again, press them all down. You wanna take a couple little pieces and put them in some of the spaces that you have near the edges or get a little more apple flavor, that's okay. All right, so we have our apples all arranged on top. And then we have one last thing we're gonna do and that's we're gonna take some cinnamon and sugar. So I have one tablespoon of um, sugar. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon that much, you could use a little less. I think it adds a nice flavor to the cake. And once that's in, just stir it up really well. It'll be very dark. And if you like the flavor of something like nutmeg, you could put a sprinkle of nutmeg in here as well. All right, and then what we're gonna do is sprinkle this on top of the dish. So unlike uh, some of our cakes that we make with the buttercream icings or whipped cream icings, this is just a very simple sugar topping, one tablespoon, not a lot. Now this cake, when you um, serve eight, it's an eight inch square pan, you're gonna cut it into eight slices. It's about 170 calories for each slice. So not bad. I have not tried yet to freeze it, but I am going to do that. I don't see why it wouldn't freeze well. But if you had all your ingredients together, you could even bake this up um, really quickly the night before. So I have that ready. It's going to go into a preheated 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. The um, sugar will be a little bit brown. Um, the cake will have risen some. You can use a toothpick to, to test the cake. You don't want any residue on the toothpick when you pull it out. That means the cake is done. I would cool it on a cooling rack for at least 10 minutes. Uh, you can run a knife around the outside of the edge, and then it is possible to flip it over. The, the, the sugar will mostly stick to the top, but if you wanted to stick a piece of like wax paper on when you flip it over and then flip it back right side, that will work. So it should come right out of the pan and you won't lose any of the topping. So let's show you the finished product. Here we have our finished product, apple kuchen. Um, all ready for a nice meal. Um, here I had another one I cut a slice out of it. So I'm just going to try a piece here. Mmm, delicious. Really perfect flavor of fall. It's not too heavy. It's really just right. Um, if you wanted to dress it up a little, you could put like a, just a dollop of whipped cream on it, but it's usually sort of very plain. So I hope you'll make the apple kuchen. Uh, the recipe will be available on the website. It comes from uh, a website called, hmm, now i got to put my glasses on again, 31daily.com, 31daily.com, and we'll post this in the comments. Um, and then you would Google easy apple kuchen. And it's a great recipe, easy to do. You should have all the ingredients you need in your home. Maybe you need to go out and buy the apples. Enjoy.